right, the FBI is finally responding to Bob Goodlatte's subpoena. He is doubling up. FBI Director Christopher Wray is doubling the number of personnel assigned to responding to the House subpoena for documents relating to the ongoing Hillary Clinton investigation. Uh, the FBI abuse controversy and the FBI's internal recommendation to fire former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe. This comes after House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte issued a subpoena for those documents. He told me he would on Sunday Morning Futures about the slow response, and he asked about uh, the uh, next move as I asked him about the subpoena. He issued the judicial proceeding days later. The department and the bureau have been slow, I would say now very slow, uh, in getting them to us. The last time I was on your program, I expressed confidence that we would have those documents forthcoming. Uh, and here we are several weeks later, still don't have them, so this is coming to a head. Joining me right now is former special assistant to President Trump, former press secretary to Vice President Pence, and today RNC consultant Mark Lauder. Mark, good to see you. Thanks so much for good joining morning, us. Maria. Do you think they're going to get these documents? I mean, it's absolutely extraordinary to me that they requested 1.2 million documents and they've only been given 3,000. I do think they'll get the documents. It's an, an enormous request. And having worked for many different government agencies, these, these take a lot of time and a lot of manpower to get through. But I think it's also very good that the, that the FBI recognizes the problem and they're, and they're dealing with it by doubling the staff. I mean, this is a public relations nightmare for the FBI. Not only are they being questioned in terms of how they've handled the investigations, how they've handled the various activities, now they're being questioned about the process. So eliminate the process questions and let's get to the bottom of it. Well, is it just a PR now? Nightmare, or is it something more? I mean, the fact is, is there's been stonewalling for almost a year. And not only that, but when we now know because of these text messages of the bias at the top of the FBI and how they used uh, kid gloves with the Hillary Clinton investigation, but we're very happy to investigate Donald Trump. So, I mean, I think it might be more than just PR. It, it is more than that in terms of the actual underlying issues, and it's something that Director Ray has talked about getting to the bottom of, and it's something yeah. that Congress definitely wants to. But having to fight a battle over process is not good for the FBI, so that's it's good sign that, that Director Ray has moved in this direction to double the amount of people that are dealing with these requests. Let, let's move on to the speculation around uh, the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, a Nevada Republican congressman, told a local journalist this week he heard through the grapevine that House Speaker Paul Ryan is on his way out. Reports say Majority Whip Steve Scalise or House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy could replace him. Here's what Speaker Ryan told me when I asked him about his future plans just last month. Are you going to stick around in order to <laughs> see the fruits of your question. labor? Because the rumblings are you're going to hopefully it, keep the house, as you just yeah, said, but no, then resign feel, and really step down after November. House. Look, my wife and I had that conversation in, in, in the spring of every election year. We'll, we haven't had that yet. We'll figure it out then. Uh, Paul Ryan has dismissed any plans to step down. Do you think we see somebody else holding the gavel soon? No, I don't. I think yeah. the speaker does. Uh, he, we, we just passed historic tax cuts with the president. They've got a big agenda, and I know that the speaker has a number of items on his plate that he still wants to get to. He's raising money left and right for Republicans uh, running for Congress and to keep the majority. I think you'll see him be a speaker again next year. I, I wonder what happens. I mean, I, I, what I've heard was the inside is that eventually he he will step down, but not before the the midterms. What do you think, Mary? Well, I don't know. I'm I'm curious to see if they're going to try for uh, another tax bill. Try to make the the uh, personal income tax cuts permanent. Mm -hmm. but yeah, his his big thing was health care, though, and that the, the, and that's what he took issue on. Said here is he was so furious that the Senate wouldn't back their plans uh, for health care. So he's like, hey, uh, we've done our job on the House side, and he repeatedly said that. And he took he took offense to John McCain coming in and actually destroying it in the twelfth hour. Yeah, but the, and, and passing that stupid spending bill mm -hmm. that got, ba basically took making the individual tax cuts permanent took that off the table. You think yeah. so? You know, what he cares opinion. about yeah, the because of the cost of it. Hmm. He cares but, about the party, though. I'm not sure he'd want to make it look like chaos right before the midterms. Mark, we're going to see phase two of the tax plan. You think? I think they're working on it. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll they'll get it done this year. I think uh, there, there's a hope for that. But I, I think right now we've got to make sure that we uh, we keep what we've got going, the momentum. And if we can make it permanent, it's probably something that's better for Republicans to be able to campaign on for 2018 and to actually get it done right now. All right. We will leave it there. Mark, great to see you. Thanks so much. Good to see you. Mark Lauder joining us there.